Good day, seniors and active adults. Welcome back to our YouTube podcast, Get Your Weekly Slice, where we protect, inform, and educate you, our seniors and active adults, every week about what you should know as you age. It is about keeping you, our seniors, in the know. Let's begin. Today, we're going to talk about aging at home, part two. Part one, we spoke about the good and the not so good of aging at home. And so today we're going to talk about weighing the options of aging at home and making the move, overcoming your fears. Weighing the options of aging at home, I just want to share with you as a certified senior housing professional, I'm out there and I build a network to work with seniors and active adults to make those connections for you, whatever you choose, if it's aging at home or transitioning into another living option. So aging at home, one of the things, if you start to see a decline in health or your legs aren't as strong as they used to be, and you just struggle with a few things while you're aging at home, keep in mind that home health is there to assist you. Now, home health is an organization that can come in minimum four hours a day, and they could come in once a week, twice, three, four, five times a week, whatever you, your choice is. But also keep in mind that it's it's direct pay, so you won't be able to use any Medicare, Medicaid, those type of uh, payment methods for home health care. And home health will do some, not all, but a majority will do some light housekeeping. They'll do some uh, interaction with you, have conversations, take you if you choose out to the store to do some shopping, et cetera. And if you want, they can make some meals and uh, put them in the refrigerator, freeze them, whatever your choice is. But keep in mind that service is available to you anytime, especially if you're at home and you're struggling with a few things and you feel that you wanna stay in your home longer and making a transition to independent living or an independent assisted living community. There's another resource that I have, it's called FIT, and it's two ladies, and they're retired physical therapists, and they love what they have done in the past, and they continue to do it as they are retirees. And what it is, is a program that they put together to help you if you're living at home to try and be proactive in with, with your living space to prevent falls. So they'll kind of show you some techniques to share of how you need to walk, don't shuffle, those type of things to prevent falls in the home because that's one of the Number one things that seniors and active adults experience when going to the hospital is because of a fall. But they put a program together and it's a free program. And if you choose to go through that program, they do it at different uh, locations of Orlando. But again, it'll they'll share with you what and how to be proactive living in your home to prevent falls. And the other thing that you really need to take into consideration is what your health is. You know better than anybody how you feel, if there's anything that's going on that you're not sure of, and you go to the doctor, the, that type of thing. But you really need to be cognizant of what's going on with you regarding your health. 
And if you are living at home by yourself, it's even more concerning to a lot of people, maybe not necessarily you, but the, but by living at home, you might experience loneliness and depression. And I want you to keep that in mind when you review and think about your overall health, because the healthiest you could stay or the healthier you could stay to living in the home, which would, for the most part, is two thirds of the aging population's wants is to stay at home. If you can monitor and be cognizant of your health, both mentally and physically, that will keep you in your home longer. And also consider if you're going to stay at home and you're concerned about security, there's several different items or gadgets that are out there. There's a lot of gadgets that are becoming, and they're calling them smart gadgets, where it could detect like in your bedroom, if you fall out of bed or when you get, you know, if you fall getting up in the middle of the night and it'll alert a place or else you could wear a little monitor around your uh, neck that if you fall or something's not right, you all you have to do is push a button and 911 is called. So, and there's always a monthly expense with that. And you can get different programs with different options. It just see, just you just need to be aware that you have to take into consideration what is going to best fit your overall situation. But there are things out there that can help keep you in your home. And I know, again, two thirds of the aging population, that is their desired want is to age at home. So those are just a few things I wanted to bring up. I also wanted to let you know that as a certified senior housing professional who works specifically with seniors and active adults, helping them transition, stay at home or downsizing, et cetera, I have the trusted resources and services, a network, so to speak, where if you reach out to me, I can help you with certain things, such as the home health care company, AC company, a plumber, a, lef, a, a, a roofer, electrician, pool, landscaper, irrigation, tree, handyman, I have all of those type of services and I feel comfortable with the network that I've established over this last seven or eight years. And keep in mind, and you might've heard me say it before that I've always, before I refer out anyone to any senior or active adult, I make sure that I vet them and I'm comfortable with that individual and that they have the passion to help and protect seniors and active adults just as I do. And because the one thing that we don't want to happen is someone that's that we refer out and they and uh, the senior gets taken advantage of. I haven't had it done to me in the last seven, eight years as I have started this uh, process of working with seniors and active adults. So I just want that to be uh, forefront that I call them my trusted resources and services. But again, the network that I've established, if there's a unique situation that you're looking for a, a certain thing to happen around the house or something that needs to be repaired, I have a big enough network that I can reach out and find out who they work with on a regular basis that they trust. So I'm confident with uh, that service that uh, I'm able to provide as a certified senior housing professional. Now, also, if you're going to age at home, I want you to consider that uh, most people are concerned about if they make that move, what am I going to do with all of this stuff? 
Well, I want you to know that there are people, services that are out there that can kind of take that onus off of your plate. They are, and there is an expense to these services. So I want you to keep that in mind. But you can have someone come in and help organize what you need to keep what you want to get rid of. There's all different types of angles when it comes to that. But again, that's why I'm doing this podcast. So you're aware of what's available out there. And it's about keeping you, the senior and active adult, in control. And it's about me as a certified senior housing professional providing you the options to help you move and guide you through this process called downsizing. So if you're aging at home and you're worried about all of that stuff and knowing that if you want to be proactive as opposed to reactive and you want to liquidate some or a lot of that stuff, there's an organizer out there that can help you with that process. There's a move manager that can help you through that process. And I, as a certified senior housing professional, can also help you with that process. But I can help you with the options, thinking, sharing, listening to what you, what your concerns are, and then providing that options for you so you're more comfortable with how we go through this process called downsizing. So I want you to keep that in mind. And uh, it's just, if you're going to be at home, aging at home, and we never know if our health takes a, a drastic decline or if it's a subtle decline or our health is, is picture perfect. We never know when things are going to happen to us but we also need to be proactive in having everything in place. So if that time ever comes, then you as, as a senior and active adult aging at home and who has a family and you don't want to burden them with those decisions and you want to take care of a lot of these things, these are just some examples or options that are available out there that I and other trusted resources and services can help you with. So I want you to keep that in mind. And then if you are making that move, there's a few things that I know that seniors and active adults kind of fear when they're making that move. So I want to kind of address some of them and hopefully they'll help you come to a decision of either aging at home, preparing for a transition if needed, and or making that move and having everything in place, being that proactive person. So one of the biggest fears of moving is, where do I go? Where will I be the happiest? How much is it going to cost? Those type of things. And I'm going to go in a little bit deeper to what type of uh, living options or senior living options are out there available and share with you some ballpark pricing and, and kind of give you a, a more detailed breakdown of what independent assisted memory care, CCR, RCs, independent rental, independent active adult, all the different options that are out there. So I'll go into a little bit more depth on that. But I know one of the biggest fears that people have about moving is, is they always have in the back of their mind that if they have to move to a assisted independent assisted community, 
that they have that stigma that it's going to be a lot like what their parents, aunts, uncles, cousins, or grandparents, when they were aging and their health was in decline, they moved them to the nursing home. And that stigma that they have about nursing homes is not what they're used to because some of the communities now are much better places to age. And what I'm trying to say is, is that that stigma is when you walked in to visit your parents, grandparents, aunt and uncle in a nursing home, the first thing that smacked you in the face when you walked in was that urine smell. And I know a majority of you experienced that. And it's just, it's just embedded into your mind, but keep in mind without going to any of these communities nowadays, that is hardly ever the case. So I just want you to keep that in mind. Also know that one of my trusted resources and services is a senior placement service. And that senior placement service, what they do is, is they kind of drill down on what your expenses are going to be, what type of community you're looking for, what type of activities, where you want it to be located. Of course, you want to make sure that when you make that move, that there's a culture there that's a giving culture, a happy culture that you feel comfortable about. And keep in mind, the senior placement service has a lot of relationships with a lot of different communities located in the area. And once he has that conversation with you about what you're looking for, he can drill down and then select three, five, six different locations for you to tour with him. And then when you find that right one and that's where you want to move, then understand he's not charging you for the service, but he will get a a stipend for you selecting a location that you toured. But that's how he gets paid. But what it does, it drills down, saves you time, your family time of looking for a good community that you're going to be the most happiest if and when you make that decision. Now, keep in mind, as a certified senior housing professional, if you're not looking for an assisted independent memory care community, I'm here as a real estate expert to help you find something that's a smaller footprint for you, something that's a 55 plus active or a rental community, something that is going to make you the happiest. So I understand what you're looking for. You want to be surrounded or near individuals that your age, as opposed to living with a family of two in an apartment complex, I know that's not going to be what you're looking for. So I take it very serious, both on the independent assisted memory care community, but also I take it serious about on an independent level, if you are not looking for an independent assisted memory care community. So keep that in mind as well. I can help you through that process, both, both ways when it comes to living options. Now, the one thing that I've heard seniors and active adults talk about before is, well, if I move there, I don't know anybody. Well, keep in mind, we all understand that. And the people that move into these make a lot of friends. So as you age, both active adults and seniors, keep in mind, it's going to be easy to make new friends because they're in the same situation as you are not knowing anybody moving into a community because their friends or neighbors have moved or their friends and neighbors have predeceased them. So I want you to understand it's a question that a lot of them ask, 
but I don't think it's a concern that you should have. You should be open-minded, have a mindset that you're going to meet new friends, new people, hear their stories. You could share your stories. It's about all about being a senior and active adult in communities, meeting people who have lived 60, 70, 80, 90 years or older, and they have a lot of stories. And everybody just wants somebody to listen to their story. So I want you to keep that in mind. And also, when it comes to uh, the communities, a lot of them are pandemics and safe. So they're very stringent on when there's an outbreak, if there's an outbreak, how to keep you as seniors and active adults in, in communities, how to protect you. So I don't want you to be overwhelmed by everything. But again, that's why I'm here as a certified senior housing professional to help you through this process of making that decision of aging at home or making that move. But also, I don't want you to be overwhelmed with the move, making the decisions. I want to help you through the process by providing you with options after I provide you with the one and a half hour free consultation to really decide and to listen to what you're actually looking for and what's going to make you the happiest if and whenever you need to make that move and what's going to make you happy to stay at home. So I want you to keep all of what I shared with you today. And um, if you're in a situation that you feel that you need that guidance, I'm here to help you along with Elba Ramirez to help you through this process, to listen, to make sure that whatever you choose, we're here to help you. Because if you age at home, we still would like to have that relationship with you, to help you as you age, because making a transition's a big move. It doesn't need to be a fear, but it's being proactive, being prepared, and we're here to help you through that process. So I want you to ask yourself a few questions. Am I happy? Especially if, if you're living alone at home. Yes or no? Is the grass always going to be greener? Yes, if you're proactive. No, if you're pre reactive. So keep that in mind. It's a process. This, if you've lived in your home 30, 40, 50 years, you want to continue to live there, we're okay. We're here to support you with that decision, but we want to help you through this process so you're more proactive than reactive, and I hope you understand that. And I want you to keep that just as a food for thought. I don't want you to be confused, but again, we're here to support whatever decision you want to make. And by hiring us as a certified senior housing professional, we get it. We're different and we're, we can be your trusted advisor and understand that both Alva and myself are background checked every year. So without that, with, without any further ado, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to call. And I look forward to meeting you on part three, a recap of aging at home, part one, part two, and we'll go over a recap on my next podcast YouTube video. Have a great day and thanks for experiencing what's available out there for you as a senior and active adult in making decisions. It's about providing you options. In closing, I hope you enjoyed today's Get Your Weekly Slice. If you'd like to discuss further today's topic, you can reach me via email at Mike at your, Y-O-U-R, Florida, spelled out, Haven, H-A-V-E-N.com, or call me at 407-340-5291 to set up an appointment. I provide a free one and a half hour in-person meeting to discuss your future plans on aging while providing you a minimum of three options to choose from. Don't forget to follow us 
and like us on Facebook and Instagram while on my website at yourfloridahaven.com. Sign up for my monthly newsletter, RSV to any of my in-person events, which are held at the Orange County Library, Smarter Senior Seminar Series events, and to view any and all of my videos and podcasts. We hope these podcasts are helpful. And if they are, please share with your friends, family, and neighbors by letting them know what we offer as certified senior housing professionals, designated real estate agents to our seniors and active adults as they age. We're a connector. It is about keeping seniors in the know. Till next time, when you come back to get your weekly slice. Thank you.